Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History, and we're going back to today, March 16th, 1947. It was on this day that a remarkable face and voice in the world of journalism was born, and I'm talking about uh, Dele Giwa. He uh, was a Nigerian journalist, editor, uh, founder of Newswatch magazine, he worked as an assistant at the New York Times for four years, and then he relocated to Nigeria. He and three other friends, including Rui Epu, Dan Agbesem, and Yakubo Mohammed, founded Newswatch in 1984, and uh, the newspaper kicked off in 1985. Delegawa was killed by a mail bomb in Lagos on October 19th, 1986. Two days before he died, he had been interviewed by State Security Service SSS officials. Now, on that fateful day, a package was delivered to Giwa's guard. And when he received the package, he was with uh, Kaede Shoinka, uh, the London Bureau Chief of Newswatch. The package exploded, mortally wounded Giwa, and uh, temporarily deafened Shoinka. The news we heard was that Shoinka had uh, gone to the restroom, and that's how, he, that's how his life was spared from that attack. Giwa was rushed to the hospital where he eventually died from his wounds. And there were several conspiracy theories about, you know, why Giwa was killed. I wouldn't want to go into all of that. But uh, in 2008, the government of Nigeria named a street in the new federal capital, Abuja, after Dele Giwa. So that's what happened today in history, uh, 1947. Dele Giwa was born. Yeah, it's a story that a lot of, you know, people, you know, who were born in the 80s, 90s, you know, would always uh, be able to relate with. There's a lot of songs that were also released. I think Fela had um, 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 a song like that, uh, some lyrics uh, that had to do with Dele Giwa. Over time, we've also seen more and more of um, his story being told. Um, uh, but it stresses, once again, you know, the need for we as a people to continue to push oppress freedom and uh, the, the rights for journalism or the, for journalists, you know, themselves to be free to express themselves in, in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. The allegations, the conspiracy theories about why he died or, you know, you know who sent, you know, him the letter bomb, uh, we would never be able to 100%, you know, clarify, you know, but um, it, it's important that, you know, those details on these stories uh, continue to um, make us remember the importance of press freedom in every single way. And um, let his story also continue to be an inspiration to other people to do what is, you know, necessary to put out the truth um, at all times. I agree. All right. I'm going back to the year 2012. And now we're talking about a very famous Hollywood actor, George Clooney. On this day in 2012, George Clooney was arrested along with other, um, others, including his father, um, for protesting. Uh, he was arrested along his father, Nick Clooney. Uh, the president of the United to End Genocide and uh, former congressman Tom Andrews, congressman Jim McGovern, um, Al Green, who's also a Democratic uh, congressman, Jim Moran, Jennifer Over, um, and, uh, Jennifer Over, no, sorry, John Over, and also Martin Luther King III. Um, they were all arrested because they had staged a protest um, against Omar al-Bashir, if you remember him from Sudan, who was ousted in 2019. At a coup, after a coup. Prior to the protest and arrest, the actor testified before the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee and held private <laughs> meetings with President, back then President Obama, about the you know, very terrible situation that um, the Sudanese people were going through, the hunger situation and the violence that Omar al Bashir was causing uh, his people after, of course, the split between the northern parts and the southern parts of Sudan. The group was protesting the hunger crisis that um, um, Omar Abashir, of course, uh, had, you know, caused uh, the people of South Sudan, the humanitarian crisis, and of course, they had blocked humanitarian aid from reaching those people. Uh, there is not still, or still not, you know, any clear um, figure as to the number of people who lost their lives in the crisis and in the war and the civil war that, you know, um, um, resulted from all of this. Uh, some people say 400,000, some people say close to a million people um, lost their lives. Um, in July uh, 20, 2008, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, 
um, ICC Luis Moreno um, accused Arbasha of genocide um, and of course crimes against humanity and different other war crimes. Um, but eventually he wasn't, you know, actually arrested. I think uh, there was an order given for his arrest, but he wasn't, um, he didn't go through with it. Um, but over that same time, the Hollywood actor George Clooney had been working with uh, John Prendergast from the advocacy group Enough Project for many, many years. And um, on this day, they decided they were going to take, you know, a few steps further by going out to stage a protest to create more awareness um, concerning what was going on in um, Sudan at that time. Um, he was arrested with a couple of other people and of course um, he was uh, set free around 2 p.m. when he posted bail, a hundred dollars bail that um, he was um, um, given. Um, but also just to quickly mention that he's not the only one. Um, Angelina Jolie was also someone who had you know, used her fame and used her name to uh, shed more light on the crisis that had taken place um, in um, Congo. You know, the Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga. Uh, <laughs> it was also someone who Angelina Jolie had spoken um, um, a lot about. And of course, uh, eventually he was uh, found guilty of using child soldiers and was sentenced to, um, he was also given a, a sentence at the International Criminal Court. So once again, George Clooney is, you know, in our news today, he was on this day arrested along with his father, um, Martin Luther King uh, III, and of course, a couple of other people for protesting uh, to create awareness um, at the Sudanese embassy in the United States to create awareness to the dare and the humanitarian crisis that was at that time taking place in Sudan under the leadership and the rule of uh, Omar al-Bashir, who eventually was kicked out of government in the year 2019. Mm. So, All right. so these things happen everywhere, don't they? Yes, yes, they do. Um, and um, I like, I like the, the part where, you know, it's important that people use the privilege that they have, and that is uh, the privilege of a, a very popular Hollywood actor, yeah, the privilege of a white, you yes. know, person, privilege, you know, here and there. You use that influence to create awareness where, where it is necessary. Yes. That really reminds me of LeBron James, who, you know, was speaking out, you know, the whole protest, the whole, you know, abuse, basically, harassment of, you know, black people in the U.S. And uh, one of his colleagues told him to keep quiet and focus on basketball, and he came out to say no. He has influence and people listen to him. Yes. So he would use his voice where it really matters. And, and that's really what matters. Absolutely. Same thing should also play out here in Nigeria. Um, we need to see more. And, and I, I would give kudos to those who step out, you know, every now and then to speak. Um, but I think uh, we need to see, you know, a little bit more of these very popular Nigerian yes. actors take, take and actresses from, and musicians. Uh, MC Macaroni, um, for instance, yes. who was the only celebrity that we know of that showed up, you know, during that last protest, so we all really need to. It wasn't the only up. one. Um, Sars did. Um, 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 Ron Town did. You know they actually no, I'm talking started about the, it last, the last. Oh, protest. in the last one. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm talking about the no. 2020. Um, but anyway, um, it, it's 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 a quick reminder that you know you, when you have that level of privilege, please use it for a good cause. When you have that level of you know privilege, please you know step out you know when it is necessary to ensure that other mm -hmm. people um, are saved from a system that seems to be brutalizing yes. them. And even when people say you're doing it for clout, just Doesn't ignore matter. that and just do what matters. So yes, it's a wrap here on uh, today in history. Or back to 1947 when Daily Gibble was born this day, March 16th. And of course, I went back to the year 2012 when actor George Clooney was arrested with his father, Martin Luther King Jr. III, and a um, few others for protesting to shed more light on the humanitarian crisis happening in Sudan mm -hmm. um, at that time. So we'll take a break here and uh, return with uh, a word from the president on the coronavirus vaccine. Do stay with us.